another episode of How I. Zach and I are driving. Zach is doing fantastic driving. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So a few people asked about how I approach an audition. So I was going to take you through from getting the email about uh, having an audition to going in the room. This is just how I do it. So obviously there's lots of different ways you can do it. Um, so for people who haven't gotten an audition before, what does it look like when you get an audition? Like what does the sheet look like? What information do you have? So tell the people tell all the, the info. people. Just one other thing before I start. One other thing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> just a little mistake. Um, I just want to be so super honest. So these are my secret tips and tricks that are an amalgamation, amalgamation yeah, of, amalgamation. um, oh, look at this. This that? is what I used last time. No, I just want to show. Look how cute he is. He just sits on your dashboard and you put your phone in him. Anyway, I've got it on a different thing now. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so it's of lots of different, uh, I've just taken stuff from loads of different practitioners and different people's books and things like that. So this is just the way I do it. There's lots of different ways to do it. But I just want to be able to share what works for me um, and, you know, take from it what you will. So the first thing that happens is you get your email. I get it from an agent, but if you have applied for a role on like an online casting thing, then they'll actors send you access actors something. access something. Um, they'll send you an email and on that email, it has the name of the project or at least like the code name. So for SHIELD, it had this crazy code name. Um, so you didn't really know what it was. It has the people behind it. So it has like the producers, the directors, it has the casting director on there. Um, it has like the network or studio that is gonna be making the TV show or the um, movie or the theater play. Uh, it has your character, character name, age, description. The breakdown, if you will. So that's the breakdown. So that's the breakdown uh, for the audition. Auditions can be self-tapes, which they're more uh, regularly lately, or uh, where you go in the room. So you'll meet with either the casting director or the casting associate, and you'll meet with them. They usually put you on tape, so they'll film it, and then that will go off to the producers. That's usually how the first round goes. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So the first thing is to skim the email, see if you like the sound of the character, look out for things like if it says uh, must be comfortable with nudity, are you comfortable with that? If you're not, there is nothing wrong with that. Write a really lovely email back and just say, um, this is a pass for me, I'm not comfortable with doing that. Or I am really open to the project, it's just uh, could they get a body double for some of these scenes or can we talk about what that is? Never, ever, ever feel like you can't question those things or at least gather more information you might be fine with some nudity but not all you know what I mean like that's something that you really or if you just want nudity or if you want nudity but like hey can we get some nudity we in need there? to show all of me which is also brilliant there might be nudists out there that's absolutely. what are they gonna do they need to act too yeah absolutely hello um <laughs> so if you like the look of all of that then the first thing that I do is and by the way just to say, this doesn't have to be your dream role to make it worth auditioning for. You have to work yourself up sometimes, of uh, work your way up in terms of different roles, different projects. And also, even if this isn't the most ideal thing that you would want to do forever, think about what this might do. Is this a casting director that you've never been in front of before? Is this a producer that you love what they make and you would love to be considered for other roles they have? Is this something for your agent or for like the casting website to be able to see what you can do? Do you want to be able to impress them in that way? So there's loads of different reasons for doing an audition. Most of the time you're not actually auditioning for that role. You're auditioning for something further down the line that you hope to be considered for. So first thing I do is I see the character description, give a little bit of a Google to the people behind it so you start to understand what kind of thing are they looking for. Is it HBO? Is it Hallmark? Those, they're two very different brands of content. So you need to kind of have that in mind of uh, where do I pitch this performance and kind of what sort of thing do they usually look for. The tone, if you will. The tone, if you will. Um, 
then I open the sides. The sides are the audition scenes. So you usually have two or three audition scenes. So read through those, get a general feel for it. If you really like those, then usually there's a script that comes with it. So for a TV show, sometimes you get the uh, first and second episode. Sometimes, hopefully if it's a movie, you'll get the whole script. For S.H.I.E.L.D., we didn't get anything apart from the sides and the sides were um, kind of fabricated based on stuff that would come in the episode, but they didn't have the same names, all those things. Or did they have the same names? I can't remember. Well, you definitely auditioned for done. Fitzsimmons. Yeah. Oh, well, so there's varying information that comes with um, an audition. You have to be like a little detective and just find all the clues. That's why, secretly, I love auditions, even though they can be quite stressful. There's something really, it's like a little treasure hunt. Anyway, so read the script if there is the script and see if those scenes, say if you're auditioning for a movie and those scenes are in the movie, see where they come in the movie so you can know what the moment has just happened before then you start to do the scene. If you see what I mean. If you've seen what I mean. Nothing. Sorry, there's just a cop behind us, so I'm just he's been following us for like two miles. So I'm well, just maybe like, he watches aware my YouTube this. channel. You might. I just I'm just that was why I was I, I was late on the, the but I'm bumped. Super laughing. Yeah. Which uh, got our cruise set right at the speed limit. Yeah, perfect. So we're not speeding. We're not speeding. Um, oh boy, I'm going to have to cut all these ums out. Sorry, I try not to edit these too much. But I think you need to know where you're coming in to the scene. Yeah, the, we'll go not, through that after, yeah. But that's what you said, like, what is the thing? Like, you read to see, yeah. like, what's coming in. Where did the scenes, where are the scenes in the script? And that might not be the scene before it. It's, like... What was the last thing that you were doing? What's the prior, emotional state what, of the yeah, character? Like where are you, yeah, where are you coming in? Yeah. So then, uh, so I've read the script. Really, when you come to do a movie or do a TV show, you should read it seven times. Seven times is what constitutes as having read a script once. But for the audition, you really just need to read it once and get an idea of where the scenes are in the script if they give you the information on that. Um, then you get to the sides. I can go into greater detail of how I approach each scene and then that also corresponds to how I would do stuff in a job that I've booked, like a shield or something. So I won't go into too crazy detail on that, but the broad strokes of the actual audition sides are, think why they have chosen the scenes that they've choos chosen. Usually it's because they want a variety. So there might be a sad scene and a happy scene, might be an angry scene uh, and a joyful scene. Something that they, there's a reason that there isn't just one scene there. So each each scene has a different kind of tone, like Zach was saying. Or the you're characters showing... are complex. So it's like what part of the yeah. character are they Yeah, exactly. To what side of the character do they want to see? So that's the main thing, and I usually label each scene of like um, argument or uh, you know loving side, or you know maybe you're, it's a teacher and the teacher you see the teacher at work and then you see the teacher at home with the kids and then you see different sides of the personality. So you want to make sure that each uh, scene has a different theme to it. So that's the first thing. That's the broad strokes of like name each scene. So if you have three scenes, what is the e what's the thing that they want to see? In scene like what's the driving uh, emotion like overall then I go through and I will um, put an intention for every single line I'll see if there's any shit tone shifts within the scene so uh, you know are you trying to get someone to, uh, to do a to do something and then all of a sudden you just get super angry or they say something to you or is this a scene where you you know you fall in love and is there a point where you realize that you love this person or something there's like shifts within the scene so I block those out then once I've read it through a few times each scene and I understand why they've chosen each scene I think um I well when do I do that the first thing I do uh, after that, after the general theme of each scene, is to learn the lines. Because the sooner you can learn the lines, the more comfortable you can get. And for me, it's little and often. The way I learn lines is this, and it has never failed me. I repeat each line five times. So if it's a big block of text, I'll Do you want to give these secrets away, or is this another video? I'm no! Just, you give them away. Uh, okay. I guess this could 
be another video. But basically learn your lines as early as possible because the more comfortable you are, the nerves are gonna kick in when you're in the audition room or when you're in front of the camera on, if you're doing it on tape. And you need to be so secure that you don't have to think about them. Should I give my tip for how I learn my lines? Yeah. I just tape them up around the camera. Yeah, Zach doesn't learn his lines necessarily. And listen, this is if you have plenty of time. Sometimes you get the audition and it's that same day and you just have to go for it. If it's one of those where it's sort of a last minute audition, if you can uh, get somebody to run lines with you, just run it and run it and run it and run it and run it. And the lines will start to get into your brain and into your body and then you can feel the rhythm of it as well. So if you have got a, a partner like Zach that's very good at running lines or if you've got you know somebody that you can just call up on the phone email them besides that if you don't if you're short on time that is what I would spend your time doing um then what was I gonna say oh yeah so then well the way I learn my I feel like I should say it now that I brought it up the way I learn my lines is I repeat them five times and then they get into your long-term memory and if possible have two nights sleep on them that is really important I think that if you can Huge. sleep on them, if you can sleep on them, somehow they just it's, seep it's in just there. there. Don't get panicked if you feel like you don't know them the day before your audition, because honestly, you go to sleep, you'll wake up, and they'll be in your brain. And there's also something before I go into an audition. Yeah, if I can have a awesome. very large bowel movement right before the audition. Yeah, somehow I'm able to access those lines much better. I don't know if it's I'm making space, and then suddenly, hey. I don't know what that is, but it's, I think it's, I think it's actually something a lot of people do because I think audition well, bathrooms get used more than any other bathroom in the world. It's true. It's very true. Maybe that's a whole other video of like what you do on the day of your audition. This and that is would true. also go for like a job interview, I would think. Yeah, because we're interviewing any meeting, every time. Yeah. any meeting that you are going to, and even sometimes honestly going out for lunch with new friends. Nerves. nerves. Nerves, basically, yeah. how to cope with nerves. Maybe that's a separate video. Oh, is it a bit wobbly? Now then, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, yeah. The last thing. Oh. Well, I just know that that's going to get cut out. That's not going to make the final cut. It might. I try to not edit these videos. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, yeah. But there are some edits in there. Um, <laughs> then, uh, so... You've learned your lines, you've broken down the script, you've slept on it for two nights. You need to pick up what you're gonna wear and what the this character would wear. I have learned over the years, and Zach, you'll probably attest to this, of like, just do a hint. Maybe don't go full crazy, uh, don't go too extreme. I have often done that, whereas if it's like a, a period piece or, you know, you're playing like a lady in waiting from Victorian times, I will go in like basically a costume, fancy dress. Um, I do think that's a little bit distracting. A little hint of the character is really good, but you could go, you know, think about how you would do your hair and makeup to maybe hint to the time, but you'd be fine in black jeans and a black t-shirt if you wanted to just kind of go seem like a blank canvas sort of a thing. So think about what you might wear. Shoes are extremely important. If your character would wear heels, wear heels. If your characters would wear sneakers, wear sneakers. Make sure you look clean and iron your t-shirt, iron your shirt, go in feeling good about what you look like. If, um, not that you have, but you just want to go in feeling good and then having a hint of the character as well and same in your hair and makeup or jewelry or whatever um but ear on the side of less is more and a little a little something from my perspective i guess is that i think a note that you potentially would want is is for them to say dial back their performance and maybe up the wardrobe like you wouldn't want to go in and your performance be sort of like lukewarm and like safe and, but your outfit is like so quirky and individual and everything else. It's like, if you go in and your performance is really, like you made super strong choice, but you're in like all black or t-shirt and jeans, they can always say like, all right, cool. Like that was like way out there, but bring that back. But it's you easier to adjust in the room. Cause they usually see they'll it. adjust you in the room. Yeah. Um, but definitely, and we'll, I'll do that in a different video cause this is already nearly 15 minutes. How's that possible? 
possible? Oh, we just have so much fun. Um, <laughs> we'll do that. We'll do that on the audition day of the yeah. like, and then I'll do one about script breakdowns. But, but that's a big reason why you choose good to make a decision. clothes that you choose. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And it's good to because once you've broken down the script, when you know exactly what you're trying to do in the scene and what you're trying to do by each line, you make those strong decisions. And so if you go for that and show them a choice, then they can always adjust you. But the best thing is for them to see what you would do with it. And then think about how what your essence is as a person, as a, as a human, and how that could fit with this audition. So my essence is, what's my essence, babe? Like. I mean, you're kind, approachable, I think, like, earthy, playful, energy. playful, yeah. Like, I I would have to do some work to be the, like... Edgy goth girl. Yeah. Like, that would be a departure from your essence. Yeah, which th I've definitely gone for those auditions. I'm, I've, you know, got further in those um, audition rounds. But just know that you're then working against your essence. So you just have to... You just have to try a bit harder and how do you then present yourself as soon as you walk in the audition room to give off that essence. Anyway, we'll go into that in a different video. The last thing I do is, uh, well, actually second to last thing. Uh, oh my gosh, six and a half minutes. Is I'll, I'll run it with Zach or somebody as if I am in the audition because when you are looking at your sides and you're kind of going over them in your head, you get it right every single time. But when you walk in, so Zach will sit on the sofa and I'll be in the middle of the room and it'll walk in as if it's an audition. So you're standing up, you're so much more exposed, you can feel very vulnerable just standing up. I always have the sides in my hands in the audition also, by the way, like no one ever expects you to be completely off book in an audition. And I think too, like when you when you've done it enough times and gone into the rooms, you're you're going to then know what the actual audition space is like, so that you can visualize going through it. Because the more you yeah. can visualize and rehearse it, it's like going into Nancy Nears' office is very different than like going into like Sheila Jaffe or somebody else. Like that's like yeah. different. So it's like you would know and like you well, can, you can ask your agent too, of like how is it, what's the setup. But we can talk about that in the other video as well. Yeah, but yeah, just yeah. to just to run it standing up with somebody reading the lines if possible or just you know put them on facetime or whatever that's a huge one because then um you're there's more distractions for your mind and it's just really good to practice that bit before the audition then the last step of the preparation is just to let it go trust that all the work you did in the script is in there it's in your body you don't have to think about it trust that the lines are in your brain and they're going to be there and just know that this is it's so fun to have an audition it's a it's not an easy thing to get the audition so it's just a privilege and a and just to be grateful for the audition and let all the let as much as the work just go and trust your instincts because really by i believe that by preparing you're kind of working with your instincts and you're strengthening um, cognitively what you want to do and then you can let your instincts take over and kind of just let let your mind be a little bit free. The more you prepare, the more you can let go because it's already in your body, it's deep in the back of your brain, it's in your long-term memory that you just kind of let whatever happens in the room or on the self-tape, if you're going to do the self-tape, like let, let yourself find the magic in the moment. Um, and then that's it so that's how i would approach it i could do another little video on how i break down a scene and then what actually happens on the audition day or on the day that you're going to do your tape so that's it great job <laughs> so supportive um i just would love these videos to be so honest and authentic and um I just want to share everything that I've learned with you guys in case you might want to know it because I feel like sometimes in this industry everybody can kind of hold what they have learned quite close and there's like a competitive aspect to it that I don't think is helpful I think to be able to share and to be able to be open about stuff um, these things might not work for you some of them might work you might be able to use them like we were saying for a job interview or whatever I think that there's a different skill set to auditioning or interviewing or whatnot than there is to 
to other to stuff it. too. Like to be oh, like yeah, a, to like, film it. Like yeah, it's a completely two... different skill, and it's something that you only you get better at the more you do. But if you can have a good strategy, it just helps it helps it be more joyful. So there you go. How I audition, and I will go into greater details of other stuff in the next couple of videos. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for driving. <laughs> Okay, love you.